Welcome to the Lend Academy podcast, episode number 44. This is your host, Peter Renton, founder of Lend Academy. Today on the show, I am delighted to welcome James Herbert. He is the president and co-founder of Lending Home. Now, Lending Home first got on my radar just around when they launched in April last year. They had some pretty big name backers and and I heard a lot of uh, talk in the industry that this is a company to watch. So I have been watching them and they they have been doing extremely well. They've basically gone from, from nowhere to the largest online real estate platform in our industry in, in pretty short order. So I wanted to get James on the show to talk about how they've been able to do that, what makes Lending Home tick, what makes them different to everybody else and how they've been able to, to scale so quickly and, and and where they're going to next. Uh, uh, it was a fascinating interview. I hope you enjoy the show. Okay, welcome to the podcast, James. Thanks for having me. Okay, so let's just get started. Not, um, not everyone's heard of Lending Home, so can you just give us the elevator pitch about what, uh, what Lending Home does exactly? Sure. Lending Home is a online mortgage platform designed to make the process for getting mortgages simple, fast, and reliable, both for borrowers and investors. We currently focus on investment property loans at this point, and we'll be expanding into the owner-occupant space at some point in the near future. Okay, so then, and you're one of the co-founders. Can you give, give us a little bit of background about, uh, about yourself and why you decided to, to start this company? Sure. I decided to start the company actually as a frustrated borrower. I used to run residential real estate portfolios. I ran acquisitions for Colony American Homes for the first year of its existence and then left and started my own fund. And I was frustrated both on the investment side, getting loans for the portfolios that we had, as well as on the personal side, when the bank that currently had the mortgage on my home took 104 days to refinance my own property. So as I looked around at the space and we looked at banks, we looked at the emerging portfolio lenders and we looked at the private lending space, we decided that, that there had to be a better way. We saw several pockets of borrowers that were either not served, underserved, or mispriced. We saw that the consumer experience was a horrible one that was slow, that was opaque, that was not reliable. And we saw that the cost to originate for the lenders was actually going up significantly. So we thought there was an opportunity to do a couple things, but provide a consumer experience that was simple, fast, reliable online, lower the origination costs and hopefully pass through some of that cost savings to the borrower, as well as provide a platform to allow investors to get access to the high quality loans that we wanted to make. Right. So, so how long did it take you to really get to launch once you sort of had the idea? What was the timeline? Sure. We started the company in October of 2013, and we actually launched and made our first loans out of beta in April of 2014. Okay. So we've been lending now for about 15 months. Right, right. So you took really six months of, to get going before your first, uh, your first loan. That's, that's pretty good. Uh, it's a pretty quick, uh, quick ramp up, I would say. So then let's... Um, yeah. What, 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 what about the, the deals you're doing today? You said they're in investment properties. Are these all like you know, single family homes? I mean, what, what are the deals that, uh, that you're doing? Sure. Yeah, we focus entirely on single family residential, so one to four unit properties. We offer two products today. The first product is a bridge product, so that's a six or 12 month loan. Additionally, we offer a single family rental product. And that right now is a 30-year loan with a 5-1 period. Okay. So what I mean by that is that the rate is fixed for five years, and after that it adjusts, but it's a 30-year loan and a 30-year maturity. Right. So you've, so you've got two different, I guess, target markets there for borrowers, for people who want to do like a, a fix and flip, and then people who want to you know, buy a property and put a renter in there and own it for the long term. That's right. And sometimes, and sometimes we have folks that do both. So we have a number of borrowers that actually come to us for a bridge product 
and then they fix up the home and they decide that they want to keep it when they look at what rental income they can get for it, and they refinance out the bridge product with a single-family rental loan. Right, right, okay. Okay, so then, and what are the typical interest rates on, on both? Like, if you know, obviously, they're going to range based on your underwriting. But what is the range that, uh, that you provide for both products? Yeah, on the bridge product, our, range, our rates range from 8 to 18, but a typical rate for us is just under 11%. And the LTVs that we do there are under 80% loan to value. Mm-hmm. And on the rental product, the rates range from the high fives to the mid nines, and the average there is right around seven. And there we do loan to value up to seventy five percent. Right. So are these are the borrowers, like particularly on the rental properties, are these people who who can't get a bank loan, who can't, who don't want to go through the pain of a bank loan? What's what is the the sort of the reason that they're they're going with you? Yeah, it's all of the above. You know, we have folks that want to have a quick process or a simple process or an easy process who come to us who may qualify for a bank loan but don't want to deal with it. We also have folks that don't qualify for bank loans for a whole variety of reasons. It could be around kind of a credit event where the bank has a more stringent requirement on that. It could be around the sort of type of property that is that that their bank that they usually work with doesn't do rental properties. It could also be that a lot of the properties don't qualify for Fannie, which is where most of the banks sell their loans off to anyway. And there's lots of ways in which you can not qualify for Fannie. So when you look at the single family rental market, you know, 86% of the rental homes in the U.S. are owned by folks that own 10 or less, but the Fannie requirements are very are much more stringent when you own five to 10 properties than they are when you own one to four, and Fannie won't make you a loan regardless of rate or loan to value if you own more than 10 properties. So we have a lot of folks that fall under the category where the primary source of capital for them is the bank, which is really Fannie Mae, they don't qualify anymore for. So often at that point, they're looking for alternative sources of funding. So that's a, I just want to be clear on that because I'm not, I, I don't know exactly how it works. So if, if, a, if a Fannie, if it doesn't fit into the Fannie Mae kind of window or bucket, shall we say, do most banks simply then just don't underwrite? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's correct. So most banks, this is not all banks, but most banks will only do rental loans when they can take that loan and once they've originated it, turn it around and sell it to Fannie or Freddie. And the reason for that is that the banks want to use their capital to acquire new customers as opposed, as opposed to kind of doing a great job of serving their existing customers. And the reason is when they get a new customer, they have the opportunity to cross-sell a lot of products and that's how they make most of their money. Right. So for them, providing the service of the investment loans is really the sort of thing that they want to kind of move on from. So if Fannie has a certain level of requirements if you own one to four properties and a more stringent set of requirements if you own five to ten and then there is no bid at any price if you own you know, more than 10. Right, okay. Okay, that's interesting. So, so then how do you find these people? Are you doing, are you finding this online? Are you working through brokers? I mean, how do you, how do you get, you know, you started from scratch, uh, you, know, eight, you know, 15 months ago or whatever. I mean, where did you find the people, the borrowers? Yeah. It's a variety of sources. We certainly do most of it online. So we have a pretty big direct to, to consumer, and that's a lot of online marketing for us. Uh, we do a small amount of direct mail as well. We have started working with the broker community as well, and we found that to be really effective. We've tried to build some really nice tools for brokers to allow them to be more efficient and more effective with their time. So we're starting to see some success there. We also nicely have a big portion of our business that's come through unpaid referrals from other customers. So we're driving just under 30% of our business as referrals from our existing customer base, which we like to think is a, a vote of confidence in that we're doing something right. Mm-hmm. Sure. I imagine, you know, you, you know, you've only been going a short time. I imagine repeat business is going to be a big, uh, big thing. A lot of people, you know, they don't just own one rental property. They own, they, you know, they want to, they want to build a whole, whole portfolio. That's right. We have several folks that have come to us and that's the case both on the rental side as well as the bridge side. We have, I think, a, some borrowers with us that are on their you know, 30th loans uh, on, on the bridge side of things as well. Wow. Wow. That's a lot in 15 months. <laughs> okay. So then can you, like one of the reasons, you know, the, the people acknowledge how horrible the, 
and the real estate and you know, mortgage processes and how onerous and all the amount of time. It's nearly as bad as a small bit as an SBA loan as far as what is required. Can you take us through what you do differently and what your application process is like? Sure. We try to make our application process very easy and simple and reliable. So if you come online to our website, within three minutes, you'll be able to get a rate and see if you qualify for our our loans. If you do, the rate that you see there when we go through and do the verification process is the rate that you'll get. It's not a teaser rate, it's your actual rate. And you'll be able to you know, slide the bar and say, hey, do I want a little bit more? What does that mean to my rate? Do I want a little bit less? What does that mean to my rate? If you decide, if you decide to apply, the rest of the process takes about you know, 15 minutes and it's entirely online as well. We've built a dashboard for borrowers to be able to see what information they provided, what they still need to provide, interact with us as needed through chat or whether we have a question on a particular file that we need some more information, as well as be able to see where we are in the process. One of the things that personally was very frustrating to me when I was as a borrower is the fact that it felt like my loan went into a black box. I never know who was working on it and what the current stage of it is. Mm -hmm. So we've created a dashboard to try and help that as well for borrowers. They understand when am I expecting to close? Where is my loan? Has underwriting been approved? What does that look like? And so we want to make the process very simple for them. So then what is the typical like wait? When you, you, if you've approved the loan that someone's given all of their documentation, how long before they, before they can get their money? So we've closed, we've closed loans in as little as a week. But the reality is that most borrowers actually aren't looking to move fairly quite that fast. What we find more is that what borrowers care about is not that every loan can be done in five days, but that their loan is done on time for their timeline. So the, the average borrower is actually usually asking us to close in about 20 days. And so we're actually trying to measure ourselves in terms of making sure that we meet their estimates as opposed to any particular day count. Right. Is that, is that part of the process? So you ask them when they, when they want to close and then you, just, you, will, you will go at their speed? Yeah, that's right. I mean, we have some minimums because we have to work with sure. third party title. If it's a bridge, you have to, we have to get a BPO. If it's a rental, we have to get an appraisal. Those processes sometimes take a while and we do our best to stay on top of them, but they're also a little bit out of our control. But we still fight very hard to make sure that we're meeting the borrower's expectations about when they need to close because sometimes there's a very firm closing date and sometimes there's a desired closing date. And in right. both cases, we want to make sure that we're leaving the borrower with a very good experience. Right. Okay. Okay, so then I wanted to step back a little bit and you know, you've, you're obviously, you came into this industry fully aware that it's, you know, if you, if you sort of, October 2013, there were still, there were several platforms that had already started. Now, you know, I hear the estimates of like 75 or even 100 different real estate platforms out there. You guys are clearly one of the, one of the leaders, but uh, how... How do you differentiate yourself? Why are you different? I mean, you have uh, obviously you're different to traditional you know, lenders. That's that's pretty clear. But how how do you differentiate yourself both with traditional and with your direct competitors online? Sure. Starting on the traditional side, I think when you look at us, or truthfully, you know, most other competitors as well, there's a huge differentiation, particularly around kind of consumer experience, the way information is transmitted. Everything's online. Everything's easy. We reinvented this the way we would want to be treated as a borrower in today's you know, 21st century. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the bank process is, is, aston is astonishing in terms of where it is in today's age of you know, apps and on-demand economy. So you know, I think the traditional lenders are, are a very different ballgame at this point. With regards to our kind of direct competitors, I think there's a couple things. I think you know, we, we believe that our process is the simplest, fastest, and most reliable. From that, we think that you can come online and you understand exactly where you are extraordinarily quickly. We think that for particularly for people who are doing actions, we make it very, very simple and very, very quick. I would say also as well, you know, we are we are funded by institutional investors and we have very large multi billion dollar funds behind us. And versus some of our competitors which are truly more crowdfunded, we don't have to wait to figure out Will there be take up from our retail platform? Right. If you come on and when you when we commit to that through that short form that your loan is eligible, we have the funding for that. We have committed funding for that. 
So in that regard, there's no sense that there's no chance that you're going to show up and the money is not going to be there. We think that that's actually really important, particularly versus the, the smaller funds that we deal with and the other crowdfunding sites where it is somewhat at the whim of the community in terms of whether that money or that particular product, product is going to get, our project is going to get funded. In our case, when you come online and you're, we see that you're eligible, we have the money to fund your loan, period, full stop. Okay, so that, let's just talk about that, that side for, for a bit. So who are your investors? And I presume you're just doing whole loans right now. So who is investing and how, uh, how many different kinds of investors do you have? Yeah, so our investors are relatively private in that regard. We've got about 12 different investors that span a different a, a range of categories. So we have hedge funds, we have REITs, we have multifamily offices, we have uni- a university endowment. So we have a large, the, the, capacity, the combined capacity of our institutional investors is something like $9 billion. So you know, we've got big, we have folks that have really, really big checks behind us. And they love the they love the assets that were originating in part because the quality has been so high, and they feel really good about these being originated in institutional grade capacity. Right, right, that's that's impressive. So then, you know, you go to your website and you have like a little invest button on there, and you go down. And so it looks like at some point you're going to do retail. I mean, why bother? Why do retail if you've got such strong backing behind you? Good question. We think that we want to give the opportunity for this for this community and other communities to be able to invest in these loans. We truly believe in the quality of what's here. We think it's a differentiated product compared to what's out there in the market. Most of the opportunities for people to invest retail on other you know, marketplace lending platforms are really unsecured consumer credit. And we think at the rates that we're able to offer and the fact that it's secured, it's a it's a very differentiated offering compared to what's out there currently. And we think that that's something that will be extraordinarily attractive to a lot of investors, particularly when we're doing things in an institutional grade way that they should be able to participate right alongside the institutions and benefit from all the infrastructure we built out. Right, okay, so um, do you have a timeline for when that's gonna happen? Uh, We're not releasing that at this point, but it will be in kind of the short to medium term. Okay, okay, fair enough. So then, Let's just talk a little bit about the, your loan book, if you would. And I know you don't, you're not making this publicly available. What can, what can you tell us about your loan book as far as you know, loans in good standing, what percentages, um, how, how you've been doing? A lot of these, you would have had a lot of turn on some of these loans. You, know, you probably had many, many completed loans. Can you give us some idea of how it's going? Uh, we've had a fantastic track record, track record today. We've had a significant portion of our book that cycled through, we have, there's been, has not been a single loan that we've lost money on, uh, and we have not even needed to put any loans into foreclosure. Yet. So, so zero, zero foreclosures so far? Zero foreclosures, zero losses. Okay, that's, uh, that's, that's, you can't do much better than that. Um, so then, and what about like volume? I, I think the, I read an article, I think it was, I think it was earlier this week actually, that said you've already done more than $200 million in loans and you, you know, you launched just, uh, 15 months ago. So can you give us some idea about the, you know, the loan volume? Is that, an, is that a current number? It's a little bit of an outdated number, but it, <laughs> but it is accurate that we are over 200 million at this, at this point. We're not, we're not disclosing on kind of a monthly basis, but uh, we're, we're certainly above that. Okay. Okay. That's fair enough. So, so then what about, um, you know, I want to talk about your, your backers just for a second, because you, you've, you've made it in, uh, just before the lender conference, you made a big announcement that, uh, you know, you've, you just raised a $17 million equity round, uh, which was now like I don't know, three or four months ago. But, you know, you launched right out of the bat with um, some pretty heavy hitter backers. You know, you know like we know, most listeners would know Charles Moldau from Foundation Capital. He's a, he was a guest on the podcast uh, uh, last year. And you know, he's, he's obviously a, he's a big um, proponent of you guys. So can you talk about like, who your backers are and how, how you've been able to put such a, an A-list team together? Yeah, we've been very fortunate to have a super strong group of backers. You know, the Charles Moldau Foundation Capital, Nikki Malka at Rivet Ventures, Joe Chen 
at Ren Ren, as well as the folks from Cowboy Ventures, First Round Capital, and Colony Capital. We've had a tremendous group that's backed us. And I think what's also really important is with each new investor, they brought a very specific and very diversified perspective on how to build out a great long-term sustainable business. So that's been a really, really strong value add for us as we've accumulated these backers over the last uh, eight, 18 months or so. I think from Charles's perspective, who was uh, you know, our lead Series A investor, I think he looked at the category and saw that it was relatively nascent. He understood and, and knew folks that had worked with me previously in my background, and he had, he had also backed my co-founder, Matthew Humphrey, at his prior company that had a nice successful exit as well. So I think when he saw the combination of market opportunity, the way we were thinking about the model, the size of the overall market, and the relatively nascent stage of the industry, he thought that that was a, a recipe for success. Okay, so then how like do you, I mean, is he, do you have a board where um, you're meeting with these people? I mean, are these, uh, are your investors providing you with, you know, with feedback and with advice on a, on a, you know, on a, on a monthly or regular basis? Absolutely. We're, we're in consistent dialogue with, with all of our board and, and several of our directors. And we've been, we lean on them for advice, introductions, and feedback on things on a very regular basis. Part of the reason why we've chosen the folks that we have at this point is because, as I said, we, we think they bring a good diversity of perspectives. And if we don't leverage those perspectives, then it's a little bit silly that we've kind of gone out and gotten them uh, for those particular reasons. So it's very nice with Charles from the Lending Club side of things. You know, Mickey's background is in the financial services, uh, very focused on brand, very focused on credit, very focused on building on infrastructure. You know, Joe at Ren Ren has obviously seen the SoFi story as well as been a successful entrepreneur himself and grown a company extraordinarily fast and understands the pros and cons that come with that, pitfalls to watch out for. Cowboy Venture guys see a lot of things that are out there in terms of Technologies and, and, and Bill Trenchard from first round has also been extraordinarily valuable, both strategically and tactically. Okay. Okay. So then, you know, you, you guys have, um, like the real estate space is pretty wide open, let's face it. There's no household name yet. I mean, we see there's certainly, there's no one who's got more than, I don't know, what, two, you know, yeah, two and a half years of track record in the online space. Um, so, you know, what is... You've got you've got some, someone like Charles Muldow on board who's really you know, been a, a lending club, uh, you know, a major lending club investor, and taken them th- you know, all the way through the IPO and beyond. I mean, you know, are you are you looking to follow in lending club's footsteps? Is, what is what is the goal here at Lending Home? Do you want to do you want to own the online space, or do you want to just own the whole property space? We absolutely think that we can build a very very large business out of this, and. I think following in Lending Club's footsteps is is a good goal for us. You know, when we look at this, we we want to we want to own the mortgage origination space broadly. We want to be the best way to get a mortgage. That's our mission, and we mean that for investors. We mean that for borrowers. We mean that for brokers and agents by the tools that we give them to allow them to apply their trade as well. We want to be the best way to get a mortgage broadly. That when someone is searching for a mortgage, whether it's for investment property or for their own home. They can come online, they can perform a search, and we will give them, we'll be able to show them the broadest range of products with the best execution for them on a per product basis, where they only have to apply once to achieve a, the, the best outcome for them. So our goal is to be the best way to get a mortgage. Right. And so, that, so let's just put, put on your, in your you know, peer into your crystal ball, if you will, because you know, the thing that I found crazy is the mortgage process really has it's been unchanged for i don't know decades i mean i'm just i'm still staggered by you know by all of the kind of the process but are you like if i go and buy a home in five years time am i going to be you know like you go just you know you meet you meet with a mortgage broker when is it what's going to what's it going to take for people to think you know online is just the way to go right now uh, you know, this is still a very, you know, you're talking about a you know, I don't know what it's a 13, 14 trillion dollar industry that, you know, and you get, there's no one here that's done a billion dollars. So there's, there's obviously a huge amount, a huge amount of growth left, but what's it going to take um, yeah. to get, to get people to think online first? 
Yeah, we're, we're working on that billion dollars for you. Um, <laughs> you know, I think one of the things it's going to take is it's going to take someone like us really focusing on making the process 100% online. If you think about the way, quote, online originators are classified right now today, Quicken being the leading example in most consumers' minds, it's yeah. not really online. You get to, they ask you a couple more questions online to figure out how to qualify you, and then they call you, and most of the rest of the process is offline. That, to us, doesn't qualify as an online mortgage experience. We don't think that's truly differentiated. Our view is that you should be able to self-serve as a, as a borrower all the way through the process if you want. You should always have access to someone if you have questions. It can be a confusing process, even though we're trying to demystify it and use as much plain English language as we can, but we want to be available for you by phone, by chat, by text, whatever is convenient for you. But our view is that you should be able to do this process entirely on your own, should you so desire, and we're building out Lending Home to allow that and serve that. Right. Okay. So before I let you go, I want to just, um, you know, I was in your offices, I don't think you were there um, when I, I was in your offices a couple of months ago in... Uh, downtown San Francisco, and I, it, was, it was a little bit comical. I don't know if you're still in that same office, but uh, there were people in the reception area, as, and that was, their, that was their space, and it was incredibly overcrowded. So you, you guys have gone you know, from pretty much nothing to, I think there was about 100 people in that office. And you, so are you, like, tell us about your, your footprint in San Francisco and how, how big you are now. Yeah, we're, we, conti- we continue to keep growing. So as we're rolling out to more states, I think we're in 22 states right now, we continue to continue to expand. We're investing a lot in our infrastructure to make sure that we have the capacity to support growth, make sure we maintain a great customer experience and build kind of institutional quality tools, allow us to scale both in the investment space as well as in the owner rock space. So as we, as we do so, that's where we're putting the, the capital that we've raised to make sure that we're building out, we're building out the mortgage originator of the future. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. So then, just one final question: Do you do you think we're getting to the stage? Like in, again, putting back on the crystal ball. I mean, uh, is this going to be something that people are going to do on on their phone one day? I mean, where we want to sort of the tech the tech is coming a long way, but um, yeah, the, the the customer of of tomorrow. I mean, you look at you, know, you talk to anyone who's in there their teens or 20s, and every, the phone is their primary computer. That's the thing they use the most. Can you just talk about your, how, how you're kind of planning your, your roadmap and sort of moving, for, moving into the future with that in mind? Absolutely. We've already taken our site and optimized it to be kind of mobile native to allow folks to search online. We continue to look to improve that process and make it easier and easier for you to apply all the way through your phone. But already today, if you're at a property and you want to understand whether or not you could get a loan on this, you can go to LendingHome.com on your phone, type in the information, and in about three minutes while you're sitting at the property, figure out exactly what your rate would be and actually start the application process right there on the property. So we, we, we also believe that that is a big focus of the industry going forward, and particularly as today's consumer gets more and more comfortable with mobile, that, that's a big opportunity. Okay. Well, on that note, uh, I'd like to say thank you very much, James. It's been fascinating. You guys certainly have, have an interesting company, and I wish you all the best. We appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time and having me on. Okay. See ya. There are a lot of exciting opportunities in the lending space. There's no, uh, no doubt about it. But by far, by far the largest opportunity of all is the real estate space. You know, you're talking the vast majority of lending done in this, in this country is done in real estate transactions. So as I said, there's, there's no company that is really dominating yet. I personally have just been very impressed with uh, lending home. I think I'm more impressed now than I was half an hour ago. And I think they are a company to watch. They, if, if someone can crack the, the, the 30 year mortgage market, doing it online and doing it to a broad range of investors, then they are truly going to be a large company. 
the twenty somethings of today, the teenagers of today, they do not want to buy a house the way their parents did it. They they don't want to take out a mortgage that's not going to be an online process. They want it to be all online. Lending home are already there. They have a great opportunity, I think, to create you know one of the largest real estate companies in uh, in the country. And they have you know they've only just getting started, obviously, but they have a lot of runway that's uh, that's possible. Now, obviously, it's a competitive industry. There are others vying for. For the same market, but so far, Lending Home have shown they are, they are executing extremely well. Anyway, on that note, um, I will sign off. Thank you very much for listening. I uh, hope you enjoyed the show, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.